there was a mismatch in IPOs, I guess in M&A last year, that buyers were expecting too much and, well, buyers didn't want to spend as much as actually sellers wanted to pay for. Does it correct this year? We're getting closer. Look, let's take ourselves back to this time last year. Yeah, the view was pretty pessimistic. You know, this time last year, the expectation was a recession in the U.S., and there was a reasonably gloomy outlook. Of course, the markets performed much better than that, and you know, we know the U.S. market was up you know, 23, 24 percent. So strong performance. And we also carried into last year assets that had been, that had been purchased at much higher prices. So there was clearly that difference in, in bid offer. I think people you know, worked through last year. We've made a lot of progress. And I think we're getting, we're getting closer. I think there's still a gap. Yep. So I wouldn't expect you know, this year to be back full, full throttle. But yep. we're getting closer. How concerned are you about 2024? So we had a resilient economy in 2023. Now we're talking about conflicts, geopolitics. I mean, the news this week was escalating tensions. How does it play through markets? Well, there are two questions there. You know, first, the economics, and I think we feel better about the economics. I think we've got, we've got more of a tailwind this year than a headwind, which was, which was really last year's story. You know, rates are going to come down. There's a lot of debate when, how quickly. You know, clearly, the central banks around the world are you know, trying to slow the expectations down a little bit in terms of, in terms of rate cuts and the speed and, yep. and when they begin. Yep. But, but that's, going to be, that's going to be a tailwind. It depends when it, when it, when it kicks in. You know, markets are at healthy levels. The European economy is going to be back to growth. You know, no expectation really of a recession in the US. So, so I think economically, we feel in a much better place. The geopolitical discussion, so this is not new, of course. This has been going on for the last you know, couple of years. The issue is that the list keeps getting longer. You know, we started with Russia, Ukraine, then we had the tragedy of October 7th. We've got you know, what's been going on you know, this week in terms of expanding into you know, these renewed strikes. More and more countries you know, getting involved. And, and that is, of course, a real, real concern. You know, markets would like to see the list of issues shrinking as opposed to growing. They're growing right now. Yeah, well, what are your employees telling you? So I know this is a, a hot year for uh, bonuses. What can you tell them? Well, yeah, we always we pay for performance. What is really, really important to us is that we have the best team in the field. We feel terrific about the team that we've got. The strategic focus of the firm is as good as it's ever been. We've got two significant pillars, both of scale. And at the end of the day, the success of that strategy depends on the quality of our people. So we're very focused on keeping you know, the best people at the firm working together. The global footprint that we've yeah. put together over the last four decades, probably, you know, is a key differentiator for us. And our people feel good. They like the focus of the yeah. firm. They like the scale that we have and the leadership positions we have in our business. Yeah. And we'll, pay, we'll play the ball at our feet. You know, there's going to be unpredictable moments this year. There's going to be uncertainty. There are going to be issues that come across our plate that we haven't foreseen. With the best people, the best team working together, you can deal with those. So, Richard, I mean, there was a point where Goldman, of course, was almost in the eye of a storm, and we don't really hear about that anymore. Do you think that's, that's like a thing of the past? Strategic clarity is a fantastic thing, and I think we've, we've got that. And I think as we you know, close the chapter on 23 and move into 24, it's all about execution, continuing to build scale in these businesses, and that's what our people are focused on. Where do you see the best growth actually coming from your regions? Well, it's interesting. I was, in, I was in Asia last week. It was terrific to be in, in Japan. A lot of enthusiasm around Japan. And I think we'll spend a lot more time talking about Japan as we, as we go through this year. You know, they're going to have to think through the, a change in monetary policy. Yeah. Yeah. And inflation is back there. And, and it's, when you go there, you're just reminded of the, the scale of the manufacturing capability, the scale of that economy. It's, it's going to be an important market to focus on. Of course, India is terrific. Everybody we talk to is doing more in, in India. We're doing more in India, so I think that'll be, yeah, that'll be interesting. But then, of course, in you know, the big two developed markets, the U.S. and Europe, yeah. activity in the capital market side, we expect to pick up. Yeah, it'll be at a steady pace, maybe not back to peak levels, but it'll be better than it was, we expect, um, 24 than, 20, than, than 23. Capital markets do not stay shut forever. Yeah, they they reopened at the back of last year, they'll continue to reopen. That's our belief. So are there pockets where you actually see, uh, see hiring to actually make up for maybe some of the strength that you were talking about in certain specific businesses or regions? Well, you know, we, we hire every single year. You know, we, we're hiring 3,500 people or so from campus, and we do that year in and year out. It's really important to continue to feed the machine and, you know, and, and build the next generation. So that we're always doing. And then, of course, laterally, we bring, bring people in to drive certain pockets. You know, our asset wealth management 
platform broadly defined is a huge focus for us. And so yeah, that will receive significant attention. So you won't believe the number of bankers that are, are not happy about Basel, that are not happy about regulation. Is this top of mind as well? Is, it, is there a danger that actually what they put in place doesn't really make sense? Well, of course, we're in the middle of that process. Obviously, the comment period um, ended this week. Yeah. Um, it's been interesting to me to just see you know, the broad range of input that's come into this, because it's, it's not just the banks that are talking about this. It's the end users that are talking about this. And, and of course, that's really important. And you know, some of those end users are in the asset management space, but it's the real economy. You know, it's, it's the airlines. It's you know, users of the products you know, that we help them hedge. And if costs go up there, that impacts the real economy. And it's, it's, it's important. And, yeah, and the outpouring of commentary has been striking. Yeah, and so, but I mean, could it actually lead to, I don't know if it's a, a, some kind of a financial event or maybe not systemic, but is there really worry that the, the market changes um, and, and seizes parts of it? Yeah, there's a good dialogue, okay. and the dialogue is is open. If you look at some of the commentary that's been coming out of the from the leadership of the Fed, yeah, um, and obviously no one's predicting an endpoint. You know, yeah, there's still a work to be done, and there's a yeah. process to be gone through. I would exp there are some smart people looking at this, and in the end, people typically get to a smart place.